Okay, it is six o'clock, and I will call the meeting to order. If we could all stand and say Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we got a uh, representative from Faye waiting in the wings, correct? Yes, we do. Okay, good. All right, so if we could start off with administrative report on agenda posting and notification of the meeting to the media. The agenda was posted at Three Lakes School, Sugar Camp School, in the town of Sugar Camp, the town of Three Lakes, and the town of Monaco. And the media notified via email included Vilas County News, Northwoods River News, WRJO News, WXPR Radio, and WACDWATK Radio. All right, thank you for that. And uh, uh, this is a special meeting, the last day of June, June 30th. And uh, do we have any amendments tonight's agenda? No, we do not. All right, so I'll seek a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion by Terry, second by Stacy. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. Motion passes 5 0. Uh, public comments. A little quiet out there today. <laughs> Everybody's out enjoying a sunny day. All right, we will move on to new business. Uh, we have a presentation of the long-range facility planning from Fade Design, and uh, who is a representative? We have both Kevin and Katie from Fade joining us tonight. Okay, perfect. And so, um, Kevin and Katie, I think we are ready when you are. All right, hoping our internet will play nice. We do might have some potential storms, and every once in a while it says unstable. But at this point, it looks like we're good to go. Okay, thank you very much. Are we okay in the room? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, um, Tip and I spoke back in January at uh, one of the school conferences. I don't think it was the Worcester Conference, I think it was the state conference, about the kind of work that uh, our firm does. Uh, it's actually, we just go by FEH design. But a lot of people do say that or pay design. Um, and I provided a proposal for kind of pre referendum, master planning. Some school districts don't go forward with referendum. They, referendums, they put these documents together to develop this kind of a, a master plan for their facilities, whether it be maintenance uh, or just an assessment so they can develop a, kind of a long term plan projects. So we sent a proposal over back around February 2nd and I want to make sure that we answer all of your questions. We put a little presentation together to tell you a little bit about us and the process. Um, FBH Design has been uh, in business since the 1890s, so over 120 years. Um, we have multiple office locations closest physical location to you is probably Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. We do lots of school work. It's probably 60% of all the work that all of our staff do. Uh, that photo is uh, one of our office locations. That's where Katie and I are from in Dubuque. Uh, we're really focused on, on school design and on community input. We do a lot of community engagement and uh, campaign planning uh, early on for our school district clients. Uh, we have architects, structural engineers, interior designers, graphic design, and communications planning, and that's really what Katie does. Our planning process usually starts with establishing goals. We call them goals for success. To really 
kind of lay the roadmap of why you're even going through this process so that we can use that as a tool every time we have a meeting, whether it's a public meeting or a meeting with contractors or so on. So this is just an example from another school district of their goals for success. What happens to the city of Wisconsin? Then we really gather and organize the facts. Um, what, what is the condition of the building? What's the life expectancy of the different systems in the building? Uh, what kind of maintenance issues do we have? Code-related issues, ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act compliance, things like that, and we assign costs to that. And we categorize those as urgent issues, required issues, or recommended. So you kind of can look at the urgent ones and say, we probably need to address those right away. And we do our best to assign uh, budgets for how to uh, accomplish those and what you might need to plan for. This happens to be just one page out of one of our school uh, assessment reports. Space needs evaluation is another uh, kind of evaluation piece too. Um, if it's a community input process that you'd like to have, one of the tools that we use so that you get people to show up to a public meeting is to establish an advisory task force. Those are 40 or 50 people that are specifically invited to participate in these meetings. There might be four, maybe five of these meetings. Uh, we put the agendas together early on and let them know what their expectations are so that it's easier for someone to say, okay, I'll go to four meetings. It's not like you're committing to be on the school board uh, and, and for three years or whatever that might be. It's a short-term thing. That's what we call it, a task force. And we use the task force to really kind of engage the public. Uh, we work with them to strategize so that any challenges we have to deal with, any problems that we have to overcome or opportunities that are established, we use that to inform the task force through the process. And we have them help us define different solutions. And we generate lots of different solutions uh, for, for some of the challenges. Some of the solutions are easy. If you need a new roof, there are options for different types of roof. Here are the different costs for that. Ultimately, we rely on the ATF to make recommendations back to the school board for those solutions and the costs of what they might be. So we get them to be real stakeholders helps us to get a consensus and support from the, from the public when that recommendation comes back to you. Thank right, you. If there are some detailed solutions that we're looking for, we use what some people call a SHRUP process. We call it a SPARC process, uh, where we bring a team of architects to evaluate many different solutions. We kind of set up our office at the school district. Um, we may have four or five staff members there. Um, we're typically there all day long, and there'll be a meeting in the evening of the advisory task force to review the solutions and the ideas that we come up with. Sometimes it's a two-day design workshop um, where we assign those costs. It says here, fast-paced, engaging, highly focused design. Uh, that's really the outcome of this. Very quickly, we develop a lot of different solutions uh, for anything you may have to correct, or if you're doing a renovation of a certain area, for example, you might say, our career and tech ed spaces need to be updated. Uh, when we do those park sessions, we do them virtually as well. This is just a demonstration to show you what you see on the Spark website on a phone. Um, we're kind of set up so that people can get engaged that way. So everything we're doing during the day, we photograph every sketch, drawing, um, cost estimate that we might create for those solutions so people can go to it and see it. As a matter of fact, if you want to look on your phone right now, that site is fehdesignsparks.com, and you can see some other Spark sessions. Uh, I think there are some on there for schools libraries and maybe a museum and across that we're working in. But it makes it even more engaging for people. Um, 
sometimes we use that spark site to connect to a site <coughs> or make comments on what they like the best. But everything will be on that spark site and we'll leave it up for six months to a year so people can access it and refer back to it. So it's not like we saw it during that meeting, but now we don't have copies of anything. It'll always be live on that website. Now these are some photos of some of those Spark sessions in action. Again, you'll see that the bottom image, there's a lot of people in that meeting. Uh, it's, it's a lot of people there, not because they're upset that their taxes are going up, but they've been invited to be a part of the advisory task force and express their vision and help the community and the school district identify what the future of their school district should be. So they're there giving uh, feedback and suggesting ideas. And we, when we invite the advisory task force, we usually tell them that uh, we've done an assessment of the building, we look at our, our curriculum and the spaces that we need to help support their curriculum. The school district has investments to make in our facilities. We have to maintain our facilities. And before we make those investments, we want to make sure that the communities all agree that we are going in the right direction. And we, we aren't spending that money in a way that it might be undone three years from now or five years from now because a different idea came up. So with that kind of premise, we get lots of folks who want to participate. Uh, the biggest takeaways, um, the sessions are usually virtual and in person uh, during COVID. We had a couple that were totally virtual, but for the most part, we do them in person and we allow people to join us virtually. Uh, it really does help to build consensus and stakeholders and, and owners of the process. Um, it includes anything from, boy, if you said, we want to consolidate a couple buildings, looking at the sites, evaluating the options. What if we just build a new building? We're working with one district right now, and uh, they have two buildings, and they've asked us to study. What if we just built one new building in a different location, or maybe on a different part of our site? What if we closed one of the buildings and built in an addition on the other one so that all the students are in one building? And what if we just renovated the two that we have? We want to make sure we test all those so that when people ask, did you look at this? Did you look at that? Our answer can be, yes, we did look at that. And we didn't pursue it because of this reason. These are the, this was the outcome of the process. So we tried to study as many options as we can so we don't have to backpedal and study some idea that somebody came up with six months later. Uh, and of course, it's really successful in generating a, a good design and the best solution. Uh, one of the other things we do when we're evaluating these options, we develop capital budgets. Now, what's the construction and soft costs related to each solution? But we also look at operating costs, long-term operating costs, 20-year, 40-year operating costs, to see is there a difference? Because that's, that is really important. Um, it doesn't take as much money to maintain new buildings as, as old buildings. Uh, doesn't take as much money to maintain a one-story building as it does a two-story building. Two-story building should have an elevator. You have an elevator, you have to you know, pay inspection fees every year. And typically, you have a maintenance contract with that. But we build a long spreadsheet of those operating costs for utilities, custodial, and so on. This is one of those summaries. It shows those. So we've got gas, electric, water, custodial landscaping, snow removal, and so on, for comparison. Uh, usually when the advisory task force work is complete, the advisory task force, they vote on what they like. We really take a poll with them, and we bring that back to the school board as a recommendation. But usually we may have 40, 50, 60 people who participated in those public workshops on the advisory task force. Um, but we want more input than that. So we do a community-wide survey to test the waters with the public um, for that future vision, that master plan, to get to educate 
everybody in the community that this process has taken place. You'll see one of those pages actually reads, did you or a family member participate in any of the public advisory task force meetings or workshops? And that green bar is the yes answer, the blue is the no. All those meetings are open to the public. So you can see that we've educated another 200 people that maybe didn't participate in any of the meetings about the process. So when we, we pose our questions, we'll say things like, well, this public advisory task force is making the recommendation with these priorities. Do you agree with these? What, how would you prioritize um, the investments and the projects that the school district should tackle in the next two years or five years? So we get a lot more input that way, and you can feel comfortable that we, maybe we've got 15% or 25% of the voters that responded to this survey. Uh, this is really just a roadmap. A lot of times these turn into some type of a voter referendum. Like I said, they don't necessarily have to. Uh, but this kind of identifies the steps of how you go through this process to resolve and, and then communicate to the community. Right, Katie. You want me to talk or? Yep. Yeah. All right. So. Oh, it's not us. Can you, can you turn down your volume, Kevin? Sorry. I can hear myself up. Um, so like Kevin said, we want to go through, we want to assess, we want to analyze, we involve, we consider and develop options. We survey the community to educate, inform, gather. Then it's your guys, your board's decision to do we go for a referendum? And once you've made that decision and it's a yes, we take off and keep going on this path for communicate and we vote. And if it's a yes, we implement the project. But to get there, we need to communicate the message. We've broken it down to three main things, the needs, the solution, and the tax investment. How do we do this? We have a timeline that we work through, um, depending on when you wanna go for a referendum if it's a, an April one, we start probably at the beginning of January, really working on um, informing the public, getting our steering committees and our subcommittees together for public relations and marketing. So these are the people that kind of help put the brochures together. They write the, um, and maybe volunteer to write letters to the editor or they help you know, share on social media the messages. And then we have the Canvas committee that talks and gets the list of informed voters together. They're the ones that are going to maybe, you know, go out and text their friends or talk to their neighbors about the campaign. Um, but we do this and it's about a seven week process. We try to do some upfront stuff beforehand, but Usually we think seven weeks is a good amount of time to be able to get out there, have public meetings, go out to your public's meetings, um, like the Legion's meeting, and talk to your citizens about the project. Uh, we do offer a wide variety of referendum services from surveys and research to helping you recruit your um, campaign committee we can do um, graphics and floor plans. Um, we can do presentations just like this. Um, and we help coordinate and consult with your bond consultants to get make sure that the right information is out there. We help you get out the vote, um, putting together brochures and or videos, social media. Um, and we help you, you know, like use your social media to your advantage, but also, you know, bro brochures are you know, hard copies and we mail them out to every citizen. Um, if, if that's what you choose, it's all customizable to what's the best way for you guys to reach your, um, your public. So, um, 
These are just some of the communication pieces that I've created. Uh, you can see there's presentations and we've created videos, um, mailers and flyers that get uh, mailed every door direct. We create uh, social media posts. So it's all based off of the same information that you would see in the mailer that gets out. It's all consistent. It all sticks to the investment, the need, the needs, the solutions, and the investment. And, you know, sometimes we address frequently asked questions, um, and we can create graphics for you that, um, that are consistent with what your school's, you know, graphics are. Um, so we feel the keys to success are getting the community involved, consensus building, uh, making sure you're communicating the needs of the district, trying to focus on the students, um, some, something for everyone. It, it really kind of depends because we've noticed when we do this process, we want to make sure that everyone in the community knows that this is a community is building and that there is going to be a part of that that's going to be something for them. Um, responding to the public, uh, making sure that your message is getting out there and you're addressing the correct information um, and to facilitate the process. We'll walk you through that and we'll hold your hand through the process if you feel like you need that level of support. Um, Kevin, this is you. We have a couple of case studies. These are really just examples. I don't know if you're familiar with the River Ridge School District. It's uh, south of Prairie du Chien. They have multiple communities. They had a school in Bloomington and in Patch Grove. And what we helped them with was to consolidate onto one campus. So we were able to build a middle school wing onto the high school and elementary school. The right of the gray area with the orange square, that's the elementary. Uh, the high school is really in the rest of that gray square. And we worked with their communities to help everybody kind of come together. And uh, we were able to help them facilitate a, a successful referendum, which is always a challenge when there's one community that's not really getting anything out of, the, out of this because we were closing a school in their community. Um, but this was a good one. They had worked actually with a previous architect and failed a referendum twice. And we were hired because of the amount of uh, public engagement that we're kind of known for. We work with the community and we were actually able to get them a lot more uh, in the final design than what they ever thought they would get. They only had four classrooms in their design. We were able to provide eight classrooms uh, plus some multi-purpose spaces as well. And the gym, of course. Uh, this is another example of that. This is a community that proceeded with a project without really engaging the community for their school. And they, they had a beautiful historic high school building. And they moved a couple of grades out of that. And it upset the community substantially firm was actually hired through a joint contract with the city, the county, the school district, the Chamber of Commerce, and the YMCA all came forward with funding to engage us uh, to help them facilitate this process with their community, and it was very successful. Uh, this is just a little booklet that we used that just shows some examples of different school projects that we completed. Some of these are, are uh, actually drawings, some are on the computer, some are photographs of the actual buildings. So we've done every kind of school project there is, from small secure entrance projects all the way to new buildings, uh, roof replacements, um, door and window replacements, uh, you name it. If it's, if it's part of the school, we've, we've, we've done it. A lot of career and tech ed spaces, that's what this image shows. Um, there have been real shortages in, in 
technical education careers. So they're very popular right now with a lot of school districts. So these, these couple slides are just why we're kind of different than other firms. Um, we've got over 120 years of experience. Uh, obviously, none of us have been working since then, but we've got a lot of clients that we've worked with off and on for a very, very long time. Um, when we do a project, our firm leadership is involved. Some architectural firms um, kind of turn projects over to their younger architects and they don't need a lot of oversight that's not the case for our firm our, our principals are very involved in the projects um, we've got a real passion for school design i was actually a school board member for about a total of 10 years uh, katie's husband is a teacher katie and i both serve on the school foundation board um, so we are very much immersed in, in the education culture and uh, in school design And we went to school. <laughs> uh, but also, we really want our clients to succeed. We, we want to make sure that you achieve your goals. And that's why we do that goal setting process up front. Find out what it is you really want. Why are you doing this? Why are you going through this process? And that becomes the first thing on the agenda of every meeting that we have so that I mean, we've all got different things in our minds, but anybody who's involved in this, we remind them, these are the goals, this is why we're here. Um, and it, it helps us to achieve your goals and helps us make sure that you stay on target, stay on track. Uh, we, we make sure you get the most value for your dollars. School funding dollars are limited, and we want to make sure you get as much value as you can. Um, we have a very high level of pre-referendum planning services. Sometimes that's what it takes to get your funding. Um, like I said, from leadership throughout, and we've got a real history of success in helping our clients uh, complete their projects. That was just an example of a school rendering and then the actual design that kind of flashed before your eyes in there. When we do these design workshops, it's pretty common for the final design of a or a renovation or an addition to end up looking the same as some of the concepts that were developed during those real, very immersive uh, Spark sessions. So thanks for the time uh, that you're giving us, and we'll open up for any questions you might have. All right. Anyone like to start? <laughs> Shelly, you good? Yeah, Terry. Yeah, Josh? Nothing offhand right now. No, Stacy. Mm -hmm. um, you're talking, we can't, we can't hear you. you. Okay, we're just kind of talking amongst ourselves here for a second. Okay. Are um, we on mute? Can you hear us, Kevin? Yes. Okay, okay. thank you. We're just more loud enough. Say, Kevin and uh, Katie, do you have any projects uh, within the last five, ten years? up in the northern area of Wisconsin? About 13 years ago, I worked for the North Lakeland uh, K-8 school district. Yep. And I did a condition assessment for them, space needs programming, and, they kind of, and basically kind of put a long-term plan together for them. Uh, we haven't worked with any other school districts as far north as you guys. All right. And in light Eagle, of Eagle Library. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> and where was that? That's in Eagle. Eagle? Eagle River. Eagle River. Oh, Eagle River. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that was done four or five years ago, so relatively recent. Um, in light of a lot of the, I guess, the, the school 
shootings and such that have happened in, in recent past here. Uh, do you have any certain dedication, any expertise in terms of school safety? Anything um, that you've been involved with that is kind of, I don't know if I want to say leading edge, but I guess um, some new discussion on some of the things that schools can do uh, and use uh, to keep staff and students safe. That, that's actually been a topic for the last 20 years. And it's been a part of our design work for a very long time. For a while, we had a, uh, a retired county sheriff on staff. And we actually used his expertise to evaluate our designs, to look for weaknesses, to identify possible ways to enhance the design. Um, he's no longer with us, but going through that exercise so many times, we've kind of picked that skill up. Um, we have been designing or redesigning entrances for a lot of different school districts on their buildings um, so that anybody who's going to get into the building has to basically be buzzed in. You can directly see them. Um, we just completed a a school project across the Mississippi River uh, in the far northern tip in Illinois, actually, where we put a student resource or school resource officer's office right at the main entrance and created a new secure entrance for them. So nobody gets into the campus without going through that and right past his desk. Matter of fact, we did that in Mineral Point, Wisconsin, too. We recently did the same thing for Schulzburg, Wisconsin. And uh, we're, we've got a project in design right now for the Royal School District in Elroy. Um, so if you know where Elroy is at, uh, but it is um, kind of due east of La Crosse, where we're doing addition to, they have a two building campus. We're connecting the buildings with a long corridor, but we're putting all the offices in the main central daytime control point. So it, that's a very common practice for us. And just every school that we do, we're very focused on that access point, you know, secured glass, um, alarm systems, classroom locking, escape doorways, and it can be as simple as when we're designing classrooms now, we basically put a doorway between every classroom. So there's doors off of corridors, but there's actually a door between every classroom. So somebody can move all the way out of the building through those doorways. So there are a lot of, there are a lot of strategies that we implement and we are connected to two different kind of web conversations. One is called Spaces for Learning, and another one is School Design, where there are conversations just continuously going on about topics, and that is one of the major topics, especially in the last few years, uh, of things that different school districts are implementing, and different strategies. Okay. All right. Um, Terry, did you have anything at all? Um, the proposal that you had sent for us to look back at, you know, back in February, we reviewed it briefly. Um, is that something that you pick and choose components of, or you can, or are all of those um, comprehensive and need to be included? For instance, I remember there was, you know, facility planning and long-range planning. But then there was also the addition uh, costs for planning a referendum. I'm just wondering if this is like a shopping list or if you guys, you know, require a certain commitment to what we would choose. It's, it's more of a kind of a, uh, a menu of, of choices. We laid it out in what we typically recommend that you would go through. But sometimes we're working with a school district, we're working with one right now that they've already completed a condition assessment of the building. 
Uh, it was a few years ago, but they have costs. All we really need to do is, well, we have to update the cost because it was a few years ago. Things have changed a little bit, construction costs. But it's, as you might imagine, it's really critical to do that condition assessment or at least have, have a copy of one. Um, space needs evaluation. If you don't feel you have any space needs uh, whatsoever, and we don't have to do that piece. Um, the public engagement, that's pretty darn important. Uh, if you feel that what you get out of the public meetings and the public engagement, maybe you don't need a community survey. Uh, that decision can be made after we're done with the uh, advisory task force meetings. And if you don't feel you need anything on the referendum side, that's fine too. Uh, we're working with the North Crawford School District, which is uh, Soldiers Grow, which is a very small community as well. They, they've decided that they're just going to engage us on an hourly basis to kind of consult with them during their community campaign. Sometimes school districts ask us to do a brochure for them, uh, Viroqua, and it's just basically do a brochure for their campaign about three years ago. Uh, so it, it is kind of a menu of pieces. Now Katie showed the one slide that showed all the different services that's definitely a menu. You may not need any of that, uh, but you can take a look at that and say, you know, you didn't list this in your proposal, but boy, we'd really like to have you do this piece. Um, maybe put a, a presentation together for you that shows what 21st century learning, how it's different than the way things were maybe 30 years ago or 40 years ago when I went to school. Uh, a lot of folks will come to a public meeting and say, well, the school was fine when I was here and the enrollment was twice as much. What's the problem? I usually can say to them, well, how, how old was the school when you went there? So you had a new school? <laughs> or you didn't have the same curriculum. A lot of, so we try to help with that. So we, we do have different tools that we can provide. So yes, it's a menu. Okay. Mike Steele, Terry Thunder, a little bit on one question. What's what is your guys' feeling on working with um, local contractors as much as possible? Yeah, absolutely. We do like to do that because what we know is if you have an issue with a mechanical unit, you don't want to have somebody have to come in from Madison to, to service that. You want somebody who's local. Plus, they're going to take a lot more pride in the work. Uh, it's their tax dollars you know, that are at work in your school, whether it's the operating, you know, their property tax dollars are paying for that. So what we typically do is, and this is very common, we find out who those local subcontractors, contractors, and suppliers are, and we build our specifications around their products and around the methodologies that they use. So you might have a general contractor that is a mason, so we try to make sure that we use a lot of brick on the building, for example. So, yes, it's very important to include those local contractors. All right. Any others? Not from I guess me. we're all set here. Well, uh, really appreciate your, your information, Kevin and Katie. And uh, we will be bringing this up for, for, for more discussion, formal discussion here, I would assume, in an upcoming board meeting. And uh, if we have any questions between now and then, we'll certainly reach out and, uh, and uh, get some more answers. So okay. thank, thank you, you so too. much. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Good to have options, right? Always. All right. Anybody have anything to add before we move on to the next item? Can I ask a question? Yes. Are we building a new school? Is that why we're looking at these companies? No. Oh.
It's just for the referendum coming up? No? Do you want to explain? Sure. Okay. It's really for looking at long-range facility planning needs because we're at the point where a lot of our, um, our building conditions, I mean, we're in great shape, don't get me wrong, but we've got to start looking at the whole picture and our boilers are getting a lot older and our learning spaces um, might need to be tweaked a little bit. I'm, I don't think any of us, including the community, is looking for new school facilities because we do have space and we do have a lot of options, but instead of what I think of as piecemealing, you know, we're kind of in the pattern since I've been here that I've noticed something breaks and we're fixing it, or the floors are peeling up so we're fixing it. And I just think we've got to get a much better fiscal plan. Our facilities out back with our track and our football and such, those take maintenance, and they're great yet, but they're, you know, like the track area, and some of that's getting towards the end of their, their purpose, which I was told um, really great, like the track was really put down well, I think Pitlick and Wick and the subcontractors that you guys work with, they said because to have over 20 years already and still have it functioning like that says what a great quality product you got. But the surface needs to be looked at and repaired. You know, so when you start adding 100,000 for that and 30,000 or 40,000 per, per boiler, and you're looking at you know individual product checks, if we can say okay, this next three years, this, this, and this. You know, three to five years, we're here, these are the priorities. That's really what we need to get out of this. And it'd be nice to have some help with referendum planning, but, um, and I know that's not the topic for tonight, but just to briefly answer that question, I'm not sure that we have to go full boat with an organization to help us support our referendum because I, uh, I believe we can somewhat. And there's products and people out there, companies that can help us that we're already associated with. Um, but I think the district has done a wonderful job over the years building the reason and the foundation of why we do have to have an operational uh, referendum. And I think it would be understand, understood that we need to possibly look at some of the facility improvements. But some of that can be included in operational, too, if we make good plans and we really take it in stride. So you're going to have some big decisions to make. But the long answer I gave you was to say, no, we don't need new buildings, but we do need to look at updating some of our facilities. Yeah, and as Terry said, you know, some of these may fit into the operating budget, and some will, may fit on the outside of an operating budget, where that would be a totally separate referendum. And, and if we were to go that course, that would be something we could possibly employ the services of, of uh, folks like Fay Design. Um, but uh, I guess you weren't considering them for like a standard operating referendum, right? Well, they, they offer that service to help us with that if we want. No, I'm really looking for long range facility planning. Okay is what my ultimate goal is in this. Knowing that, out of that information we get, we're going to see some things that rise to the top as needing to be addressed sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. kind of where I'm coming from. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess uh, we've had presentations now from two different firms. Um, it would probably be good maybe um, prior to a discussion on uh, who is going to be our partner in this uh, and maybe just identifying some of the things that you just outlaid here and then maybe get some input from the rest of the board members on, on some of the thoughts that they think okay. that we should be looking at uh, and, uh, and that may help facilitate a decision going with one form or the other. Very good. So. Very good. Good question. So, anything else on that topic? Okay. Yeah, what's next? What's next? On the agenda? No. On this topic. Is there another firm topic. that we are going to watch a presentation from? These are the only two oh. firms that really responded because um, I've been trying to reach out and seek input. And as you know, with the, the world that we're in right now, they're booked out so far ahead that um, these are the two that gave us the most interest. Others were interested but couldn't really look at it 
until, you know, like a year out or even closer to two. So yeah, There were a number of firms that we did talk to. We did the talk to several, yeah. Uh, in Milwaukee, and uh, I didn't, I, I can't say I've talked to all of them, but a fair amount of them, and the two that we've spoken to thus far were standouts uh, in terms of uh, some of the things that uh, we, we think we're looking for. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so I guess it was, uh, uh, you know, there are definitely a lot of options out there, mm -hmm. no doubt, and, uh, but I guess these did stand out, and, and uh, so we got presentations from two, and if somebody sees something else uh, from another firm or something like that that you'd like to get a proposal from, um, I guess uh, we should probably do that fairly soon. Because mm -hmm. um, I would assume we're looking to get this on the agenda. When are you thinking? I would like it on the agenda for a July meeting. I know that's two that's weeks quick, away, so. <laughs> two and a half weeks yeah. away. Yep. Okay. I would be personally hard pressed to make any kind of decision at all because I was I don't see the depth of what we're looking for in either one of these presentations and I find them to be very very general and, and uh, I'm not so sure how you get over that. I kind of agree with Terry. Um, like to kind of see more of a direction that we would like to see first. And then maybe see something a little more personalized. Okay. So come together with a potential list of needs. Is that what you're thinking, mm -hmm. Josh? Okay. And uh, so we could start with that at the July meeting, Terry. Very good. And uh, put together a list of those needs and then um, potentially having those addressed specifically by the two firms is that your thoughts at least as a direction yeah I mean they could you know they could obviously sprawl out a little bit but if they could hit some okay. direct I mean, it's pretty personalized clear items that, that we could use outside help if we're going to have a solid 20-year plan from the plan standpoint um, and you can address all those bits and pieces. I mean, we all know what those are. They're brick and they're mortar. And there's electric and there's computers and there's there's uh, heaters and air conditioners and boilers. And, um, going beyond that gets pretty murky for me. Beyond? Beyond the obvious plant things. I mean, I can, I can understand bricks and mortars, uh, but I'm not sure I understand sort of the rest of what they were talking about. I mean, um, if we signed them up, they would sign, they would fix all of our ills. <laughs> no, and, I and, don't think that would happen. You and I know that ain't going to no. that no. ain't going to happen. No. Um, so I think somehow or another, from my vantage point anyway, we. Uh, I think we as a board and you need to to sort of come to grips with not this overall amorphous cloud thing up here that we're talking about, but what do we really want them to do? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think you'd be in the best position to uh, to advise us what are what are the main issues or the issues. Well, and I think their selling point in when they're doing a presentation like this is saying to us, because they could give us more specifics. The last company has already walked our building grounds. They have that. They know that. This company has not chosen to do so. But that's what they want to sell to us. Um, I could go through, you know, as a novice and say, this is what we need, this is what we need, um, and give you probably still not as in-depth as what you need. But when you pull the community in and you pull the, the, the people, like the athletic department and you know building and maintenance and I don't even know that our building and maintenance is capable of giving us thoroughly what we need for a plan they can say yep that's old or that's end of life or that has a few years that we think but they don't I believe have necessarily the the capability to look long term like how long are we talking about 
what are we looking for the fiscal Im, you know impact that we're trying to to figure out here so I am more than willing to pull that together and um, share with you what I think and, and then of course what you guys would like to add to it but um, I don't want to be misleading and say I'm looking for a capital project that's what this is about it's about dealing with what we have here and then expanding what we potentially need because we we do we have wonderful facilities but I'll tell you we are not necessarily state of the art where we need to be with the technology that's growing I look at our tech ed spaces for one which are wonderful but they are we are out of space we need more space we need reconfiguration of space because that is really a heavy interest we've seen developing and we want our kids to be getting that so what does that mean? Some classroom spaces now change into a different look, so they have those areas. Um, our typical classrooms, you know, some maybe not wasted space, but an efficient space that could be reutilized for smaller learning groups, which opens it up for like a learning space in the library. So that's the kind of ideas that these people can really get more deeper into, but we have some pretty good brains and, and um, ideas right here in in house and in the community and with our educators and our, our own community that I think can really help guide well, us. I'd like to through. see these 50 community members yep. come forth and help us out. And I would say that um, the I had shared, it's been a while since you probably looked at it or remember, but um, the pricing uh, differences between these two companies were very different. Um, where Nexus, what they shared with us, was very much based on what we would choose to do in a building or renovation project that they would lead, or if we decided we didn't want to work with them, they had the walk away clause that we would pay them a set amount of money and then we would have those plans. We get the plan and they're done. Whereas why I asked the question I asked was this was much more of a menu well if you want to do this then it was 27,000 if you're looking at referendum information it's 3,000 so in both I think companies would have that kind of menu approach if that's what we want but we really need to know what we want I'm not looking to spend a lot of money in the upfront but I do think we need to get a good handle on what we need to be looking at is it your feeling that we want to move faster rather than slower in view of the referendum coming up? Well, I don't know that you necessarily have to link the two together. I think the companies that we listened to in the last couple of weeks would encourage that. But again, our referendum is for operational. Correct. And the big operational items that I can say we need to look at are like our boilers. We need to think about that because they're at that point. Whether these people are involved with us or not, we need to be thinking about that. And that needs to be part of the projections that we're making. Mm -hmm. So I didn't give you a real good, clear answer. I don't think they have to be linked. But um, I plan on going forward with the referendum um, planning and all of that. Like right now, I'm already in it. I'm, I've started it. I'm already in it because, as Jen and I know, that time is going to go very quickly and we want to be ready for it. Mm -hmm. If we were waiting till the April uh, election date, then I'd say, yeah, they can be, you know, pretty linked together. But I see this much more as the operational that we have to get our public informed of, and at the same time saying we are looking for longer range planning. We may be coming back to you to say this is going to cost more money, like when you did your roof project um, several years ago. I think that was like 1.5 million. That was different from your um, operational. The main thing is that we're open and honest and clear all the way through with our citizens. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so I think it would be good to, to come together, I guess, and discuss uh, the list of potential needs. Okay. And uh, let's see. I mean, when we think back at some of the last project that we've done here as a district was in the early 90s is when we put the high school um, in the uh, auditorium in the gymnasium on and uh, so it's, it's been a while and in, you know, if you look at our grade school junior high um, 
you know, there's definitely some things that, as Terry mentioned, just flow, um, adaptability of the classrooms and such like that. It just, I think it needs attention to be looked at to make sure that uh, we've got facilities here that our staff, our teachers can deliver their curriculum in the most efficient manner uh, to our students. And, uh, you know, and that requires an, inv an investment. Uh, and it's one of those things that just never go away. Uh, things change. So, yeah. And I don't, we know we are a little tight in sure camp for space, so, right? <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I think there's definitely uh, um, a good place to start with just making sure that we're all on the same page here. Very good. Uh, let's do that for July. Yep. And, uh, and then we can take it to the next step after that. Very good. Anything else on that one? All right. Okay. Now to our executive session. Uh, adjourning to executive session pursuant to Wisconsin State Statutes 19.851C to consider employment promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. Specifically to consider employment, compensation, performance evaluation of the district administrator. I'll seek a motion to adjourn to executive session. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Terry, second by Josh. Roll call vote. Terry? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Stacy? Aye. Josh? Aye. Mike? Aye. Uh, so it's 5 0. Uh, we will go into executive session. We'll give uh, Jen a few minutes here, and, uh, and then uh, we'll be ready to start that. So, all right.